The Book of the Damned, by Charles Hoyfort, Chapter 8Q. It is so easy to say that axes, or wedge-shaped stones found on the ground, were there in the first place, and that it is only coincidence that lightning should strike near one, but the credibility of coincidences decreases as the square root of their volume, I think. Our massed instances speak too much of coincidences of coincidences. But the axes, or wedge-shaped objects that have been found in trees are more difficult for orthodoxy. For instance, Arago accepts that such finds have occurred, but he argues that if wedge-shaped stones have been found in tree trunks, so have toads been found in tree trunks, did the toads fall there? Not at all bad for a hypnotic. Of course, in their acceptance, the Irish are the chosen people. It's because they are characteristically best in accord with the underlying essence of quasi-existence. Monsieur Arago answers a question by asking another question. That's the only way a question can be answered in our Hibernian kind of existence. Dr. Balding argued with the natives of the Suntil Perganas, India, who said that cut and shaped stones had fallen from the sky, some of them lodging in tree trunks. Dr. Balding, with orthodox notions of velocity of falling bodies, having missed, I suppose, some of the notes I have upon large hailstones, which, for size, have fallen with astonishingly low velocity, argued that anything falling from a sky would be smashed to atoms. He accepts that objects of worked stone have been found in tree trunks, but he explains that the Suntils often steal trees, but do not chop them down in the usual way, because that would be to make too much noise. They insert stone wedges, and hammer them instead, then, if they should get caught, wedges would not be the evidence against them that axes would be, or that a scientific man can't be desperate and reasonable to, or that a pickpocket, for instance, is safe, though caught with his hand in one's pocket, if he's gloved, say, because no court in the land would regard a gloved hand in the same way in which a bare hand would be regarded, that there's nothing but intermediateness to the rational and the preposterous, that this status of our own ratiocination is perceptible wherein they are upon the unfamiliar. Dr. Balding collected 50 of these shaped stones, said to have fallen from the sky in the course of many years. He says that the Suntils are a highly developed race, and for ages have not used stone implements, except in this one nefarious convenience to him. All explanations are localizations. They fade away before the universal. It is difficult to express that black rains in England do not originate in the smoke of factories, less difficult to express that black rains in South Africa do not. We utter little stress upon the absurdity of Dr. Bodding's explanation, because, if anything's absurd, everything's absurd, or, rather, has in it some degree or aspect of absurdity, and we've never had experience with any state except something somewhere between ultimate absurdity and final reasonableness. Our acceptance is that Dr. Bodding's elaborate explanation does not apply to cut stone objects found in tree trunks in other lands. We accept that for the general, the local explanation is inadequate.